You could have signed with the Yankees, but you signed with the Mets because it was a, a faster path to the major leagues. Of course, the draft was not to come to try and equalize the talent at the major uh, in, in baseball at the organizational level until 1965. So, a great player at James Monroe High School, following in the footsteps of the great Hank Greenberg, had his choice of teams and could have signed with the Yankees, and I'm sure other clubs, but chose to sign with the Mets because he thought that this was the fastest path to the major leagues. And here you are, 17, not old enough to drink, and you're in the major leagues and get seven at-bats in 1962. Do you, have you thought through the years that maybe you appreciated what happened in 69 more than everybody else because you had been there from the beginning practically? Well, I think when you lose a uh, hundred games for seven years in a row, you appreciate Rainhouse. <laughs> Offer to go to Japan. I didn't want to go to Japan because I just had left them over there visiting the troops in the hospitals over there. And it was very depressing to me, seeing the young kids that strapped their legs off and stuff like that. And it's, it was touching, very touching. And you wonder what you're going to say to cheer these guys up. We went to several hospitals over there in the Far East. But I had a, I had it in. We had just won the World Series. And that's all the guys wanted to talk about. And I'm saying to myself, these guys pay an ultimate price. And they're not worried about themselves. They're worried about I'm going to get to Shea Stadium when I get home. <laughs> I told one soldier, I said, give me a call. I'm, at, I'm sure you get to Shea Stadium. Unbelievable, the spirit of those guys. So that's what transpired. In 1969, we all remember where we were the night that, that Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. We were in Montreal and, 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 and had our... The United Charter um, been working okay. We would have been in the air flying back to New York, um, but we had mechanical trouble. So uh, naturally, uh, we repaired to the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the bar watching the TV, and uh, well, it was the only thing open, of course. <laughs> it would, if it wasn't open, it would have been open. But uh, we're we're in the, we're in the bar in there uh, watching watching this amazing live video. And, and Neil Armstrong taking his, you know, small step for man, our incredible leap for our uh, giant leap for mankind. And, and, and uh, uh, the irony was not lost on us that um, here we can't get from Montreal to New York. <laughs> and then get to a guy on the moon, you know, it's like everything's possible here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's going to get home before us. Yeah. You know, we're here tonight. I'm hearing stuff I haven't really heard a lot. You know, we're not together all the time. And, you know, the, the stories just keep coming out. They just keep getting better of how, uh, how luck went our way and how things went our way that year and how uh, we moved through this as a team just continuing to roll and believing in ourselves to really do this thing. And I think the legacy of that team is that when you talk about the 69 Mets, it's not just about Tom Seaver or Jerry Kuzman and, and names that you think of right away, but it's also about Al Weiss and Kenny Boswell and Cleon and Tommy and Eddie and all the guys here. And so over the years, that legacy has grown, grown because it is a, a team that people know everybody contributed to the success of that team, and I think that's really the true legacy of the 69 Mets. The sum of the parts. Exactly. Right. I was glad I was part of the championship, and it's lasted 40 years. We still have friends here. 40 years later, we're still talking. So something must have been going right. Sure, and that's why everybody's here tonight, because they will always remember you, and you're in their hearts forever.